everyone, I'm Meredith. And listen, I'm just a girl stuck in my apartment, probably just like you guys, right? And I'm looking for someone, well, anyone other than my husband to talk to. So I found some people. Today, it's Annie Morcos. She's an artist and a TikTok star with Annie's Art Studio. And we're talking about how her business has changed since the pandemic. Before we get started, don't forget, like and subscribe below. Annie and I will wait. Go ahead. Okay, did you do it? All right. Let's get started. Annie, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for having me. Let's do this. Awesome. Awesome. So I want to talk about business for you as an artist and as an influencer and how everything kind of changed actually for the better, not to too many spoilers when the pandemic hit. So talk to me, what has always been your, you know, artistic style, your genre? Um, well, it's really funny. I always, when I tell people this, they actually never believe me. I didn't own a paintbrush till about 2015. That's um, what, how did you get into it? What, what? Yeah. So, um, I was in business school. And, you know, daddy raised a very strong girl with a strong head on my shoulders. I would sit in these business classes and think, you've got to be kidding me. Like, they, like you're t people just didn't understand the basics. I'm thinking, this is what you're teaching me? I'm paying thousands of dollars for college and university. And not to bring it down. I think it's very important to get educated and business school is amazing. But I was just like, I wasn't being challenged. It wasn't enough. I was at the university for about four and a half years. I was like, you know what? I'm going to study art. I saw animation and thought, eh, I just have to pass. Whatever, let's study animation. Graduated there. I went to the Academy of Art University in San Francisco for 3D animation and visual effects. I studied there. And then I went to the Los Angeles Film School um, and got my degree there, graduated valedictorian, and I studied all kinds of digital arts. And that's kind of what I was doing. So fast forward a couple of years, worked in the industry, worked from some, for some great visual effects house, but it just wasn't for me. Um, it's a lot of competition. It was a lot at the time. It was really hard for a tiny, cute little girl in the industry to, you know, deal with. It was all male. Really hard to climb up the ladder. I woke up one day and I was like, you know what? I was like, I wonder if people can drink and paint. It was on my birthday. I had, had a few cocktails and I was like, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. Woke up the the day after. Googled it and I was like, oh, there's like multi million dollar companies that do this, like that do events and parties. You know, I said I could do it too. I went, bought paintbrushes, bought canvases, went to my cousin's house, got everybody together and tried to teach them just on the go. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't plan anything. It was amazing. It was so much fun. So basically long story short from there, I just started just doing art. And because I have a background in film and animation and visual effects and film and editing, it just, I think it put me a little bit above other people. So I would film myself. I would edit things. I started my own YouTube channel. I um, we'll do time lapses and fun videos and five years later had a huge following. I'm one of like the biggest, um, art influencers and like, I would never trade this for the world, but how I ended up here was just a total just snowball effect and just life just kept wherever it pushed me. I just went, that was it. That's all I did. What do you think triggered you to go from, you picked up the paintbrush, but then what triggered you to uh, press the record button and take it all to YouTube. I don't know. I like it. I like making people happy. I like that people look up to me and ask me questions. And, you know, when people say like, Annie, like you've helped me through so much, it just means the world to me, honestly. So that's kind of why I press the record button. Even now when I have a really hard time, um, if I'm going through stuff in life, I still share that and I still put it out there and use my artist therapy and show people to say like, listen, I'm not perfect and you can do this too. So keep pressing that record, keep making your art, it's gonna be okay, so. That's very uplifting, it's very yeah. uplifting. Now, five years in, yes. how do you describe the art that you make and what you're selling on your different platforms? What kind of art is that? I would say now I'm mainly a resin artist. It's an epoxy, either resin or epoxy is the same word. So I do a lot of casting. I do a lot of painting with it. And we call it, we say painting because I don't think there's really any other word for it, but um, it's not just actual painting. You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, but it's mostly abstract. This has about 18 layers. It takes forever for me to build, but I guess these are more like sculpture likes as well. Rewind with me. Yes. Mid-March, the pandemic hit, 
yes. the country shut down, business mm -hmm. dropped for most people. Uh, yours took a different path. <laughs> Tell me yes. what happened between oh my God. your the artwork, the subscribers, your influencing. What yeah. happened when the pandemic hit? Okay, so it was wild. Like, okay, so again, I've been doing this for five years. I lived in a, my entire studio now, I have a bigger space now, but I was surrounded with my artwork. I would always cry to my mom and say, mom, nobody buys my stuff. Like how much stuff of my own can I own? Like, I need this to go away. Somebody please buy my art, like anyone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, starting to get a little bit more popular and I started working with bigger brands and that helped a lot. Now March came, um, everybody, started staying at home because at first initially it was like a lockdown and it wasn't just a quarantine and i think that helped a lot because there was a lot of eyes on us now what happened was i made the pyramid that i just showed you with the rose in it i was the first one to make something like that in a big mold that big usually when you do a resin cast you don't make them that big it's a lot of work so I did it, put it on Instagram, didn't think anything of it. It was gonna get a few thousand views like it always does and nothing. A week later, it's blowing up. It's in the millions on my account. There's maybe 30 or 40 um, of those like art share pages, the satisfying pages that shared it. And they're getting tens and millions of views on each one. My account went from like a 30,000 following to almost 100,000. Wow. In a week wow. or two. <laughs> it was wild. Um, before that, though, my, my TikTok was doing pretty well. I'm almost at a million there. And I started my TikTok last October. So that was going really high. But again, once everybody, you know, was in quarantine, everybody was bored. Everybody was online. People wanted to do, do it yourself and art and watch. And they were just paying attention. So, um, you know, just a lot more eyes were on me. But then once that video went viral, everything changed. My entire Etsy store wiped out. All my artwork wiped out. My I was on such high demand everybody wanted a piece of my um art and then i was just working day and night making things just to have enough stuff to sell you know um did you was, have problems like because of the the shutdowns did you have challenges like getting supplies oh or my god and or distri distribution <laughs> mm, okay so <laughs> You're not supposed to leave the house so we would leave the house once every two weeks but all the stores were closed and then i'm trying to ship stuff uh, people now start complaining because they think I'm not Amazon. I also sell supplies, you know, but um, I'm not Amazon and I'm not about to go out and get COVID-19. So, um, you know, it was really hard. Um, I, Amazon cleared out. All the supplies I usually get was gone. Nothing is coming from China. So all my supplies on Amazon ran out. And then it's really funny. Well, the company that makes the mold for my pyramids. The, the company messaged me and they're like, Annie, you sold us out nationwide. I was like, what? They're like, and we can't send it anymore. Like, they're like, stop posting about it that we have it because we don't have it anymore. So, uh, wish for talk about that. Yeah. Get rid of my stuff, of my stuff. But what happens when everybody does? Yeah. And you're a uh, one woman shop here. I mean, one woman boss. Mm -hmm. I do everything. So, but then when I can't get my hands on supplies, I'm very, usually very well stocked up with supplies. I always have a lot of stuff. And if I don't have, if I run out of one thing, I do have a lot of other things to use to make other things. So for me, it worked out, but um, there was a while where I was like, uh, where am I gonna get my stuff? I still haven't been to Michael's. So since March, and for me, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. I used to go to Michael's just to walk around. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, it was, it was hard and, um, supplies running out, companies like not wanting to ship. You know what though, I'm, you know, it, it, it looks like I'm this huge company, a multi-million dollar artist, you know, but I'm barely making ends meet as well. Just because you have numbers online and you have that influence, it doesn't really mean you're a millionaire, <laughs> like really, no. Um, so it's just like, I- Still my struggling artist. Yeah, it is. I mean, it doesn't pay the bills, you know, but um, there was a lot of stuff, but mostly it was very positive for me. It turned around, but I'll tell you, it slowed down. That was the beginning of the quarantine. Right. Um, and now people they haven't been working. Petered, I hear. Yeah, so now people haven't worked since March. In the beginning, it was a few weeks, it was a month, it was two months, it was still fun. Quarantine was fun. Everybody was like, I'm going to 
going to make videos. I'm going to bake. I'm going to work out. Everything's great. Right now, people are pulling their hair out, depressed, sitting in bed, drinking too much wine, not wanting to do anything. Me, myself included. It's really hard to keep the motivation when you look around you, the world looks like it's falling apart. So it has decreased a lot, but honestly, like all that push that came in, it's still there. But I mean, I'm not clearing out my Etsy shop like it was before. Is but it just easier to handle now? Yes, because I also managed myself and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I hurt myself twice. I got, um, I almost had frozen shoulder one time because I was working on 15 projects at a time in one day um, to keep up with the demand of people wanting to buy my products, you know? Um, so that, and then after that healed, I had to take weeks off of uh, work. Um, I pulled my back. Same reason, because I didn't listen. I just don't do that. Now I do, I work at my pace. I, I'm smart. I have to take care of my body as well myself. When my body is saying enough, it's enough. So, you know, um, it was a lot. I, one person was doing, I should have had like, I was doing the work of like maybe 10 to 15 people, one person. So it, it becomes a lot. How are you now that everybody else got online, everybody else started getting creative. How mm -hmm. are you pivoting to keep the numbers up, to keep the business going yeah. forward? So once everybody started getting online, the amount of artists that popped up on Instagram and TikTok, like new artists, was what incredible. Can you do? I can do this. This is fun. I'm going to do this too. And it's wonderful. Um, but now there were so many more people on social media all at the same time that everybody was fighting for um, the space, right? So the social medias, the apps, the programs couldn't keep up. So sometimes I would post things and I was like, this is not normal. Like no one's seeing this post. It's not getting anywhere, you know? When I did my pyramids, I'm telling you, it sold out everywhere, the molds and everything, the supplies. So it's like everybody was doing the same thing. So things get bo boring. Once, once a higher influencer does something, everybody starts mimicking and copying, which is incredible. And it's very, um, I feel humbled by it because when people want to like recreate my work, I inspired them and that means everything to me. Mm -hmm. So I did it for a while, but then afterwards when everybody starts doing it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, come on, let's, what's the next thing you're going to start doing? So, um, you know, I always try to reinvent myself. I get very bored too. I can't do the same thing over and over again. So, you know, I'll have a series. I, you know, I did my pyramids right now. I'm doing fruit. And once I finish with the fruits, I have no idea where I'm going to lead, but you know, fighting for that space, basically to keep that attention on you, you have to do something that nobody else is doing. Okay. Because if you post something, the first time you post something new, if it, and you have to make sure it's a really good video, very interesting to the eye. So that's kind of where my film school comes back in my animation school. So angles and editing and the audio and everything that's, you know, it has to be very, very catchy. Um, and once you post something new like that, everyone's gonna start commenting, everyone's gonna start sharing. And when they do that, your, your video is going to get a lot more attention and the algorithms are going to be on your side for that post. So it's always kind of reinventing yourself and making sure you're, you're making items that fit into your world, but are very specific to you. And then once start, people start like doing similar things, it's time to move on and do something else. You know, if you really want to be an influencer, you got to influence. Right. You got to change the industry. And I think I did that with my pyramids. So now it's time for the next, to bring in the next series of things that people are going to want to be inspired by. So Can you give us a sneak peek of what that is? Oh, yes. Hold on. <laughs> so I posted I this. I have thought that by fruit, this is what you meant. That's so cool. I love that. You know, the panels, if you could see, you see, so this, this yellow area, yeah. that, that's all resin. So this is the sculpted panel. So the panel is like 3D and stuff. That's and so I took it, yes, yeah, so I made this moment and I'm gonna, my next one is gonna be a kiwi, but I just finished this one. Oh my God, I, look, please look at how cute this watermelon is. That's and so, so cute. I mean, it is the watermelon. cutest thing ever. Look at that, I mean. That's my favorite. <laughs> Can people hang them or are they to lay flat? What do you? So they come with these like little divots inside. So you just put the two or nail in it and it just like hangs. So this one blew up on TikTok, my lemon one. That's so awesome. I sometimes love it. they don't yeah, sometimes the, they don't have the little divots inside, but people kept telling me to make this into a little imagine this as a little side table in your house. Like a little, oh, little thing on it. It's big enough. And I have bigger pieces too. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do with oh, it. Oh yeah. It's so cute. 
yeah, they're versatile and they're just colorful and fun. And I, I imagine like the 60s, you know, like colorful and, you know. What inspired, let's just quickly, what, what inspired that and what inspired the pyramid? Um, the pyramid, so I have tiny little, I'm sitting in front of my work desk, so, so companies send me materials all the time for me to test out and kind of, um, use for free as, you know, as an influencer, because again, once I use something, everybody wants to buy it. So I just tag them in it and everybody gets it. So they send me these, these little pyramid sets, like these tiny ones. And I was using these and I messaged them one day and I was like, Hey, do you guys have a bigger one? Cause my parents wanted, I'm half Egyptian. So pyramids kind of like speak to me. Yeah. Um, so my parents were like, you know, can you make us a bigger version of it? And I was like, let me see if there's a mold. Messaged them. They sent me one. I used it once. And they were, I was like, oh. And that's the video that went viral. That's so, so cool. The, the fruit? I don't know. So the company sent me the sculpted panels. I've known them for years. We worked together with different companies and stuff. Um, and I've had them for a while. And I kept thinking, what am I going to do? What should I do? I wanted something new. A lot of artists in my industry they're ocean artists so um it's always blues and lacing like for um the waves and stuff which is beautiful i do it sometimes but it's not really my favorite thing to do um it's really funny i come up with concepts while i'm asleep i'm a very light sleeper so my brain kind of works at night and i kind of remember things like I, i'm like talking myself through ideas i thought about it while i was sleeping i have no idea i'm not really a lemon person and I was like, oh, maybe the round ones will be cool. I, I don't know. I just thought about like the 3D aspect of it, of layering it, and then yeah. the panels showing. And then I was like, I'll draw, you know, the lines, put another layer of resin when it dries, put a lighter color, put a lighter, and it looks 3D. And um, I blame it on my animation kind of sucks. I was a 3D animator. Everything for me has to be uh, in layers and 3D and shadows showing and things like that. So, but then. Once I did the lemon, I was like, oh, the heart can be a watermelon. And that was it. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so excited. So, you know, as things are growing for you, news hit this week of some potential scariness with TikTok mm -hmm. that President Trump wants to ban TikTok in the U.S. What mm -hmm. went through your mind when you heard this? I had a app. So much of your audience is there. I have a million followers on TikTok. I... I literally, I stood like this. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a dark woman. I'm Egyptian. I have, I'm very olive skinned. I'm dark and tan. Did you look at me afterwards? <laughs> I, I went pale. My blood, blood pressure dropped. I started hyperventilating. I'm having hot flashes. And I called my friend Andrew, which he's my uh, mental health coach. He's my business coach. And he knows a lot about um, social media and he's in business with helping influencers and pushing their business. So I called him. He's like, I already know calm down. He's like, I'm parking. I'll call you right back. And he already had a plan in his head. He's like, okay, you're going to go in. This is what you're going to do. You're going to download the videos you need. You're going to get this app to like change your location to Canada. Cause we didn't know if it was going to go away overnight or, I mean, listen, we still don't know what's happening. There's a lot of talk that Microsoft bought the, right. the company. Right, right. Or part so of it. Hopefully it'll just be a happy transition. It's scary. Like, yeah, you have to make sure that your audience knows all your platforms and you have to give them a reason to follow you on all of them. If you have the same content everywhere, why would I follow you everywhere? I would follow you on my favorite one. You're going to put the same content everywhere. So you have to just make sure you have to learn how to be able to like drive your um, audience to all your platforms and keep every platform a little bit different. So they want to stay there. So they look forward to your different posts, you know, but what do you think you've learned in this time? I mean, it's been a roller coaster for everyone these last months of quarantining and, and now coming out of it. I learned how strong I am and how smart I am and how much of a businesswoman I am. And I'm not just an artist. And, you know, I've learned to push myself, but also make sure that I'm okay. The main thing I've learned is it doesn't matter if I start making millions, if I'm in bed and I can't move because my shoulder and my back are out all the time, it doesn't work that way. So I've learned to, you know, be grateful for the following and put enough out there for myself to keep growing, but not to sacrifice myself for it because social media isn't real life. You know, if I go away on social media, nobody really cares. Nothing, nobody's life is really going to change besides my own. So I think I've learned that, you know, I'm strong and I can do this, but I've also learned that I need to protect myself so that I can stay strong and stay powerful and stay 
this off like this smart business woman, you know, um, and that numbers come and go, people come and go on social media all the time. And, um, you know, to take advantage of the moments, but also again, number one priority, take care of yourself and be true to yourself. And remember that the art lasts and you create something and there it is. Yeah. It's so important. And that's yeah. so powerful. Yes. <laughs> I'm an art lover, so you're preaching to the choir here. Well, Annie, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Such thank good you. lessons, and uh, we will see what happens with TikTok, and I'm sure there'll be so much more to talk about with that. Yes, I think our next chat will be a lot more. Uh, we'll see what else is up, and we'll talk and gossip about that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Thank you again, Annie. We'll see you thank next you. time. This has been Let's Talk about it.